Hello. So in the previous module, we covered a brief history of language modeling, and we talked about recurrent neural networks, which along with other models like convolutional neural networks were the mainstay of the period leading up to 2017. The year is now 2017, and a new work by Google will ultimately shape up the coming era. This paper is called Attention is All You Need, and it showed that recurrent layers were not needed after all. Instead, they relied entirely on an attention mechanism to draw global dependencies between the input and the output. The paper presents a model called Transformer, which uses stacked self-attention and pointwise fully connected layers for both the encoder and the decoder. We can see here highlighted in the red box, one of the attention blocks. In the figure now appearing, we see an example in which we are modeling the dependency between the verb making and other possible subsequent tokens. Different attention heads weigh different words and then weights from different heads are combined to get the likeliest tokens to follow the verb making. In addition to outperforming earlier models on various tasks, the transformer allows given its architecture for significantly more parallelization, leading to faster training times compared to earlier models like recurrent neural nets or convolution neural nets. The next big thing is going to be BERT. Another transformer model, Arsel from Google, first introduced in late 2018. From an architectural point of view, the model is closely based on the original transformer model. So the contribution of the work is not on the architecture design level. What BERT did is essentially popularize the pre-trained and fine-tuned paradigm, so much that this paper amassed more than 60,000 citations in about four years, and led to a whole line of work called Bertology. This body of work basically tried to understand and explore the capabilities and limitations of the BERT model on various NLP tasks and in various settings. The main idea behind pre-training is that the model is first trained on large amounts of data. So it sees a lot of data from various sources and jars and can in principle learn many general things from the richness of the data. This will then give the model a very good starting point in terms of parameter initialization. One motivation behind pre-training is that the model is trained on unlabeled data, which is vastly available compared to specific tasks that have limited amounts of labeled data. As a consequence, once the model has been pre-trained, we go and adapt it to a specific NLP tasks, which would have limited labeled data. This could be a classification task like sentiment analysis or natural language inference, or a generation task like translation or summarization. And this paradigm has been shown to be very effective across many NLP tasks. Now, under pre-training, there are many uh, possible pre-training uh, training objectives that have been explored in the uh, literature. So some of the popular ones include mask language modeling, which leads to the task of predicting a missing word from a sentence. So let's say in this uh, example, we have large language and then a mask word are super cooled. Essentially, we are getting the model to learn that the missing word here is models, and then to fill in that word. And another popular training objective is, for example, the next sentence prediction. Now, many studies showed how powerful this paradigm is. One of them is uh, from 2021 from FAIR, the Muppet paper, in which they looked at more than 50 uh, fine tuning tasks, and they noticed that beyond a certain number of uh, data sets or fine tuning tasks, the accuracy performance of, of, mod of learning models kept going up uh, across many popular benchmarks like MNLI or Squad or others. Concurrently, there was another line of models being developed at OpenAI, starting with GPT in 2018. GPT is similar to BERT in, it, in that it's largely based on the transformer architecture. However, it did not get traction as much as BERT initially, but with scaling the model, it got better and better, 
with GPT-2 in 2019 at 1.5 billion parameters, and then GPT-3 in 2020 at 175 billion parameters. This eventually led to ChatGPT, which took the internet and really the world by storm. Unlike other models, ChatGPT is optimized for chatting with humans through a method called reinforcement learning through human feedback. What we saw here with the progression of GPT basically reflects, reflects to a large extent what we saw across the whole uh, research area of large language models. Essentially, uh, models kept getting bigger and bigger, thus requiring more and more data. And just recently in this whole window of like five to six years, people started realizing that bigger, bigger models and more data alone is not gonna push us uh, any further. And that it's better to have human feedback to improve performance.